Hi. At this point, we should have a basic understanding of what combinatorics is, and we should know that it is relevant in several areas and situations in the real world. But in order to make combinatorics useful, we need to know how to solve problems involving combinatorics. And really, the best way to do that is to divide our approach into two steps. So first, we need to be able to look at the problem and identify which type of counting method the problem calls for. Once we have figured that out, we need to use the appropriate formula and compute our answer using factorials. So as mentioned before, the first thing we need to do is to determine which counting method the situation calls for. So when looking at a problem, to determine the method we're going to use, we need to first of all look at if selections are made with or without replacement. So with replacement it would be where something is something can be chosen again and without would be a choice that can only be chosen once. And then secondly we need to determine if order matters in the given scenario. So does choosing one thing before another matter or not? Once we have chosen the counting method, we need to assign the variables correctly. And each of the methods use the variables n and r, where n is the number of objects available to choose from, and r is the number of objects that are actually chosen. So one type of method that can be used is the basic counting principle. And we want to use this if it's a situation that has sampling without replacement, and if order matters in that situation. And if that is the method we want to use, the formula is going to be n to the r. The options available to the number of options we actually choose. Another method we could use is a permutation. And this is a situation that involves sampling without replacement. So a choice cannot be chosen again, and order matters in that situation. And as we can see over here to the right, this is the formula for a permutation, n factorial over n minus r factorial. And the other type of method we might choose is a combination. And this is a situation that involves sampling without replacement and order does not matter. And this is our formula for a combination n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Now I want to step you through a couple example problems that uh, involve combinatorics. So number one, we might be tempted to say it's a combination right away because the word combination is in the problem. But if we look a little deeper, we actually find out that this is a permutation. So the first thing we do is determine if this problem uses replacement or not. And in this problem, we will see that uh, there is no replacement because we want to determine how many different combinations there are. So once, let's say, 279 is one of our combinations, well, we're trying to come up with a unique combination, so 279 could not be selected again. So we know that there's no replacement in this problem. Next thing we look at is whether order matters or not. In this problem, order does matter because 279 is certainly different than 972. So we know that this is a permutation because order matters and there's no replacement. The next thing we do is figure out how many options are available and how many things we actually choose. So from the problem we know that we only have three options available, two, seven, and nine. So n is three.
and then the number of things we're actually choosing is three as well because we're setting three digit locks so we're going to choose three of those available numbers So our formula here is n factorial over n minus r factorial. So in our case, it's going to be three factorial over three minus three factorial. And in the next video, we will learn how to solve problems using factorials. So this problem says evaluates 8P5 and 9C1. So what this means is we're asking how many permutations are there when you choose five things out of a group of eight and that the order matters. To do this, you take the total number of things, that's our eight, and you take the factorial of that and put it over uh, the factorial of the total number minus the amount you're choosing. So this would mean, in this case, 8 factorial on top. And on the bottom, n minus r, so 8 minus 5, it would be 3 factorial. When you're calculating these, it's, it's good uh, to write them out until you get really used to it, and maybe you can do some of this in your head. But 8 factorial is, of course, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, and technically times 1, but, you know, the times 1 doesn't really change anything. And then 3 factorial, and I'll write it down here, is 3 times 2 times 1. What you're going to see is that this and this will cancel. And you're going to get a lot of cancellation with these permutations and combinations, so be looking for that. So now we have... 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And at that point, you'll probably want to get out your calculator. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And I am getting 6,720. Permutations tend to be bigger because uh, when the order matters, there are a lot more ways to put things together. Let's try this combination. You have nine things you're going to choose uh, one thing out of that nine. So in the combination formula, the total number factorial goes on top, just like in the permutation one. And on the bottom we have n minus r factorial times r factorial. Well, n minus r, nine minus one is eight, so that's eight factorial. And r factorial, well that's just one, one factorial. That's not really going to change anything. Let's look at what we get when we when we do this one. We've got 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's over 8 factorial, so 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 factorial, which is just another times 1. Now all of this is going to cancel. And then this times 1, well, it doesn't really matter. What we end up with is 9 over 1, or just 9. And if you think about that, what this problem is asking is, let's say you have 9 different uh, kids, and you want to find know how many ways there are to pick one of those kids. Well, there are 9 kids. You could pick one kid, or the other kid, or the other kid. So there are 9 different ways to pick one kid out of a group of 9. So that is a little bit of work with uh, computing permutations and combinations.